Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a duster type beat. I'm going to show you how to record drums, bass, and guitar, but the only instrument you're really probably going to need is a guitar. You can program drums pretty good and use plugins or samples for bass guitar, but when it comes to a good old six string electric guitar, it's really hard to recreate that sound with plugins and stuff. So let's get started. All right, so let me give you a quick rundown on Duster here before we start recording or anything. Duster is a very cool, very neato band. They have a very, very lo-fi indie rock type sound, and that lo-fi sound comes from them playing around with tape recorders and such. Their most popular album, Stratosphere, came out in 1998, and it wasn't really popular at the time, but they've gotten a lot more traction now with the rise of the internet, and they have a pretty sizable, pretty culty following at this point. So now that you've been filled in on the Duster vibe, let's grab a guitar. So when it comes down to the methodology here of what we're gonna play on the guitar, some of their songs are in standard, some of their songs are in drop D. You can pick and choose, but I'm gonna go with standard for this video. And you kind of want to treat your standardly tuned guitar as if it's an open tuning. So try to utilize some of your open strings here and there. They tend to use a lot of major and minor seventh shell chord shapes, which are kind of like the emo chords. So maybe add some of those in there, add some power chords even. I'm gonna be using some of these. Using a combination of power chords and those emo chords kind of gives them their mixture between like sad emo and like rock kind of. Also the really big thing with Duster that people really identify with is their kind of slow droning chugging kind of guitar patterns. Just a simple little But they do also have other songs where they do more of a plucky arpeggio kind of thing. But I'm just gonna go with the simple little so we're just gonna do downstrokes only for basically the whole time. And we wanna have some slides in there, stuff like this. So wherever possible, I'm gonna add those slides in. I'm also gonna be using the front single coil pickup because I think it sounds the best, the most accurate of all the pickups. And I'm just gonna do a little pattern like this. And then I'm gonna switch to some lower, more powerful chords for the next section. I also saw some people on the internet, the interwebs, saying that a lot of their guitars are tuned down ever so slightly, like a quarter step or something. All you really gotta do is just not tune your guitar before you record. I wouldn't normally advocate for that, but it kinda sounds good here. So now I'm gonna record the little chord progression that we've come up with. It's best to play it all the way through if you can to give it a more authentic live sound. And I'm also only gonna record one track of this because they usually have one main guitar layer instead of double tracking. So let's do it. Let's do the recording thing. So sometimes they will have just one main guitar layer going throughout the whole song, but a lot of times they will embellish it with stuff like slide guitar or lead melodies or like repetitive little droning melodies. The first thing that comes to mind for me that I want to do is record a second layer of that deeper guitar part and then pan it to the left and put some distortion on it. So let's do that right now. That was not too hard. So if you... So if you think we're done with the guitar just yet, you'd be mistaken. We have a couple more things that I'd like to record. So with all of these guitar layers and stuff that we're adding, we're keeping it very, very simple. Don't do anything crazy, nothing too fancy, and we're not even gonna record very much at all. I just wanna record enough guitar here so that we can splice in things as we need to throughout the beat so that it doesn't get too repetitive. All right, so we're gonna record like the simplest lead guitar thing ever. I'm just gonna play a random slow little melody on a couple notes that sound good here, something like this. doesn't have to be anything fancy it just has to fit with the vibe of the song let's record that sort of thing and now for the final guitar thing you're gonna grab yourself a slide <laughs> grab yourself a slide if you do not have a slide per chance you're gonna grab yourself like a beer bottle or some sort of piece of smooth metal or glass or something. And we're just going to record a super duper schmooper simple slide thing. So if you've never slide guitared before, I'm going to give you some little tricks. Don't be frightened. You're going to place the slide on one of your fingers and then just lay it gently across the top of the strings. You're not going to press down at all because if you do that, you'll hear the sound of it going across the frets and that's just a really gross sound. So just caress the strings ever so slightly and try to mute 
all of the other strings that aren't the one you're playing because otherwise you're gonna get some weird residual noise going on see how it gets that we're gonna try to avoid that as much as possible that little overtone thing so now finally i grant you all permission to take your guitars and put them away in exchange for the bass guitar we're just going to play the root notes of those little chords. I don't even know if you call them chords. They're just like two notes at a time. But we're just going to play the lowest note of those. In their live performances, I've seen that their bass player does play with his fingers. But on the records, it sounds like there is a pick being used on the bass because of the attack that you can hear. This is a pretty minor detail, but I usually use a thicker pick on bass. This is like over a millimeter. But I feel like that makes the bass a little bit too powerful for what we want here. So I'm just using one of the thin 0.6 Dunlop picks. And that really gave me the attack that we're going for here. So let's record that, why don't we? <laughs> Headphones over the hoodie vibe. Fire. Almost forgot one little note when you're recording bass is you want to make sure you're including those slides that you did in the main guitar part. But yeah, now I think we're done with bass guitar, honestly. And now we can move on to drums. Okie dokie, first off, we're gonna talk about the drum recording setup. So we have the resonant head on the kick drum and we have a kick mic pointed right at the middle of the head. We also have snare top and snare bottom. And I had to listen really closely, but it does sound like a lot of times they use some sort of stereo overhead vibe thing. So as you can see, we have one overhead here and another one over here. These bad boys are equidistant from the snare drum. You can measure the distance with the tape measure or whatever. I didn't have a tape measure, so what I decided to do was this very scientific, very foolproof method. Each microphone is about three drumsticks length away from the center point of the snare drum. You want to make sure they're an even distance away to avoid any sort of phasing issues and things of that nature. And last, but certainly not least, we're going to use this microphone right here as a room mic. And in terms of what we're actually going to be playing on the drums, it's going to be very simple. We're just going to be doing a little on the ride cymbal, and then with the kick and snare, just a little and that's all we're going to play throughout the whole beat. Keep it simple. So once you have the drums, feel free to chop and splice them as needed. I'm not the greatest drum player out there, so I needed to adjust some snare hits and some kicks here and there. But ideally, throughout the whole mixing process of all the instruments, you don't really want to do a whole lot of time stretching and adjusting. That kind of sloppy, offbeat feel to everything is what you want. That's going to make it sound more authentic. So keep all the little imperfections and everything in there. As far as the drum mixing, we just have kick and snare down the middle, and the two overheads are panned to either side. And then the room mic is down the center, but very tucked away in the mix. Everything has a little compression, little EQ on it. And then I also added Kramer tape on the 7.5 setting just to give it a more lo-fi tapey kind of sound. Also really quickly, if you don't have a drum set, never fear. I'll show you how to program drums like that in like two seconds. Both my vintage drum kit and my super cool indie drum pack, they have a couple one shot sounds that work pretty well for this. So we're just going to put the snare on the two and the four. We do a little boom and then boom, boom. And we have and now just fill each two steps with the ride symbol, press K to adjust the velocities, and then just vary every other one. And there you have a super simple programmed version of the drums. If you wanna know how to make these more realistic, you can check out my past couple tutorials, I've talked about it. And I also have a whole video about programming realistic sounding drums right up here. So really the only things that we have left here are the mixing and the layout of the beat, which are both super simple. Every guitar has an amp sim plugin. I'm using CLA guitars and it has a little bit of EQ. The slide guitar has a bunch of reverb and the lead guitar has some reverb, but not like a ton. And the bass guitar just has EQ and compression, super simple. But the real important thing here when it comes to the mixing is what you put on the master track. As I said at the beginning, Duster has a very, very lo-fi sound due to them recording with cassette tape recorders. So I'm gonna put RC20 on the master, which I do think think is a little bit of an extreme effect, but it gets the job done for what we're going for here. We're going to go to presets and we're going to pull up the cassette first generation preset, turn this way down, turn this way down. 
already right there that gives it so much more of an accurate duster sound. But if you don't have RC20 or any sort of fancy plugins, never fear. Take a gander down here for a second. See the EQ thing right here? This makes up the majority of the tape sound that you're hearing. You can recreate this exact effect by cutting out a bunch of the high end, doing a sharper cut in the low end, but also a boost down here, and then a little boost back to the high end again. Exact same vibe, but just with stock plugins. If you want to take it further, put some cassette noise in the background and just put a little, little bit of distortion on the whole thing. But what I'm going to do is before the RC20, I'm going to put Kramer tape, go to presets, mastering, clean and open, and then turn this to 7.5. It's very subtle, but that just adds a little bit of a tape kind of sound. And I use this plugin on pretty much everything that I make, link in the description. And just like everything else in this beat, the layout is also very simple. The drums and the bass play throughout the whole thing. And we're just gonna swap out the different guitar melody parts that we recorded to keep it interesting throughout the whole thing. Because if it was just straight up, throughout the entire thing, it's gonna get really repetitive really fast. So honestly, that is pretty much gonna do it for me in this video here today. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you learned a thing or two here. Make sure you subscribe, I don't usually say that, but me and my good friend Zol are trying to reach 100,000 combined subscribers by New Year's, and if we don't, we have to shave our heads, and no one wants to see that. The full beat that I made in this video here is linked in the description below. Go check it out if you want to, and I will see you guys next time.